Wow. <laughs> now that right there is really impressive. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, hello there. Don't mind me, I'm just looking at some nice booty. I've been searching for booty for a long time now, and so far, I've seen a lot of them. Big booty, small booty, I just can't get enough booty. Do you want to see some booty? <laughs> Don't lie, you know you do. Okay, just hold up a second. Here it is, booty! Shiny, golden, round, and irresistible booty. And if you thought I was talking about people's assholes, then you clearly have a sick mind. Seriously though, you, you should get some help. So, what was the point of that introduction? Well, the reason why is because the next Ratchet & Clank game we have to review is Quest for Booty. <laughs> Seriously, what's up with those names? They're kind of like something you would type up to watch pornography or something. Names like Up Your Arsenal, Size Matters, and probably my favourite out of the bunch, Full Frontal Assault. But nevertheless, Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty is the next game we're checking out. And to be completely honest with all of you, I didn't know this game existed until late 2017. And apparently, this game ties in between Tools of Destruction and A Crack in Time. But once I have finished playing Quest for Booty, I slowly realised why I didn't know this game existed in the first place. Insomniac Games have brought the momentum back to the Ratchet & Clank series with Tools of Destruction, so I just hope they can keep it up. It's time to see where this game lies as an instant classic or a forgettable experience. This is Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment and developed by Insomniac Games, Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty was released in 2008 and was released on PlayStation 3. Following the events of Tools of Destruction, Ratchet and Talwin have been searching for Clank after he was kidnapped by the Zoni. They learn from an IRIS supercomputer that a legendary pirate named Adstrom Darkwater is the only person who came in contact with the Zoni. They came to his crew only to find out that Darkwater has been dead for years. About to be executed, Rusty Pete, along with Roma Slag's head, saves the two and convinces the crew to abandon Ratchet and Talwin on Hufa Island. We see Pete and Slag's head later, and Pete wants to help Ratchet find the map where Darkwater's ship is at. Later, once we found Darkwater's body, Pete tricks Ratchet and places Slag's head into Darkwater's body, therefore resurrecting Slag. So in order for Ratchet to find Clank, he has to discover his arsenal of weapons find the Fulcrum Star, and destroy Slag once again. Overall, the story is... okay. I can't say I hated it, but I also can't say I loved it either. While I was playing Quest for Booty, I was expected to go through hours upon hours to see what Quest for Booty has to offer, comparing to the previous game and the original trilogy as well. Until I finish that game in an hour and 30 fucking minutes. You can actually beat this game in around an hour and a half to two hours. And for a Ratchet and Clank game, it's a bit disappointing. If it was the DLC to Tools of Destruction, then I wouldn't have a huge problem on it. But because this game is released as a standalone title, it does become an issue in my opinion. I will say that it is cool to see Slag and Pete back, as it shows that they're not just one-off characters, and it's great that Quest for Booty is more focused on pirates, as it was one of my highlights from Tools of Destruction. But, there is one person that I am not glad he's back, and that is the fucking plot convenience guy. Couldn't Asomiak just come up with a new character instead of the same characters before? I mean, we are exploring around a galaxy after all, so it would be nice to see some different people and creatures to show we are in a galaxy. And there was something I noticed in Quest for Booty that I forgot to mention in Tools of Destruction, 
and that is the comedy is just not the same as the original. I've observed that the comedy in the future series is more focused to aim at kids and while it's not a huge complaint, I feel that a more adult humour fits in those games nicely. Some of the jokes here just comes off either as not funny or just downright cringe. This path is so dangerous, so forbidden, that only a recitation of the fabled Song of the Dead shall open the way. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is me handle, here is me spout. Hmm, hold left two to strafe while carrying a weapon, eh? Thanks for letting me know, Crest for Booty. Even though I am halfway into the game, and now you decide to tell me how to strafe? So, let's check out the gameplay. It's a lot more design on platforming, and I can't really argue with that. Even though I already said a few problems about this game, the wind turbine platforming sections are... fun. They offer a nice challenge that isn't too hard, but it will take some time to get used to. Same thing with the puzzles as well. They're not too difficult, but again, it will take some time. And uh, those are really the only things I like about this game. As for the weapons, the weapons line up in this game are the same weapons from Tools of Destruction. There's no powerful weapons and you only get the basic weapons like the Combustor, the Fusion Grenade, and even the Tornado Launcher is in Quest for Booty. I forgot to mention the Tornado Launcher in the previous review, so, long story short, the Tornado Launcher sucks major balls. You have to use your controller to move the Tornado around to kill enemies, and it's such a useless weapon. While the soundtrack does sound nice and fits the game well as a pirate's theme, but just like Tools of Destruction, the soundtrack is pretty forgettable, as they are generic pirate music. What's really interesting is Insomniac added a new gameplay style with your wrench. You can use your wrench to open up platforms and move platforms around. I like it. It's a pretty neat idea and it's something different to the Ratchet & Clank formula. As for the boss battle with Slag and Darkwater, it's... fine, but nothing too special. You go through different pirate ships and face him in multiple stages, and at times, he doesn't really feel like a final boss, as it's more like a midway boss battle in my opinion. So anyway, once you defeat Slag and Darkwater, Ratchet retrieves the Fulcrum Star and finds out where Clank is located. Until a very familiar robot shows up. I'm not gonna say who it is, as I'm guessing you probably know who it is already, but just letting you know, he will tie into the next Ratchet and Clank game. And, uh, that's all the noteworthy things I need to talk about. I mean, I wish I had more, honest to god, but because this game is so short, and the gameplay elements is mostly the same from Tools of Destruction, there is nothing much I need to add. The best way to describe Quest for Booty as a whole is if this game was the DLC to Tools of Destruction. While the game does look good and can still obtain 60 frames per second, the platforming is fun and the wrench gameplay is interesting. But this game is a very short experience. The game is way too short and definitely could have been longer. The weapons are the same and nothing new is added. The soundtrack is unmemorable. And because this game doesn't feature any new game plus mode or platinum trophies, it's no wonder why this game is forgettable. Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty gets 5 out of 10. Just because I gave it a 5 out of 10, that doesn't mean it's a terrible game. I enjoyed it for what it was, even though this game is short and can easily be finished from early morning to lunchtime. I wouldn't recommend this game to anyone, but if you do come across it in your travels, then... Pick this game up and try it out. And who knows, maybe you'll might have the best hour and a half experience in your video game life. 
and I think the only reason why this game existed in the first place is so that fans could get hyped up for the next Ratchet & Clank game called A Crack in Time. Tune in next time as we check that game out, but until then, thank you for watching this review, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe today. My name's The Gaming Critic, telling you to keep calm, and keep playing video games.